Welcome to PhD PDF Scholarship Podcast with Dr. Kapil Gar. So, uh, dear all, I uh, hope you are doing good. Uh, welcome to the fourth episode of uh, PhD PDF Scholarship Podcast. Uh, this is an exclusive group for engineering research aspirants. This group involves researchers currently doing PhD and postdoctorate at international universities and premium institutes. Uh, we also have scientists working at R&D labs who are willing to share their experience and keen to help aspirants to evolve them as researchers. To bring them into limelight and get to know their experience is the main intention of our podcast. So, if you are an aspiring researcher planning to pursue a PhD or postdoc position in the historical rich United Kingdom, then join us for this exciting episode with Dr. Kapil Gar, a research fellow in heat engineering at Cranfield University in the UK. So, before going ahead with the discussion, um, uh, let's have a quick uh, host introduction. Uh, over to you, Arun. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm currently working as an assistant professor in the uh, Center for uh, Excellence in Computational Engineering and Networking at Amrita Vishwavidya Pita in Coimbatore campus. Uh, I did my PhD in Thermal Science from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the National Institute of Technology, Calicut, after which I joined as a postdoctoral scholar in the Department of Mechanical Engineering in the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. And uh, also, I worked as a postdoctoral scholar in the University of California, United States. Uh, uh, my research interests are mainly in uh, thermal desalination, uh, solar energy, uh, solar thermal applications, uh, nanotechnology, nanomaterials, uh, and in water harvesting as well as water recovery. Over to you, Nirmal. Uh, Dinesh can go ahead. Hi, I'm uh, everyone, and I'm, I'm Dinesh. Uh, Basically, a mechanical engineer, uh, and then I worked in uh, power generation industry uh, around like four different companies in, in India, and then uh, in Abu Dhabi, uh, in, and then another company in Saudi Arabia. Briefly, like um, around eight years, uh, I worked in power generation industry as a performance engineer mainly. So, uh, worked on a different technologies, including conventional coal fire power plant and combined cycle power plant. And, uh, first of a kind solar thermal power plant demonstration plant uh, so uh, yeah covering a range of uh, conventional and then also renewable technologies uh, then i decided to do my phd in 2017 um, and i joined cranfield university in the uk uh, and under the supervision of kumar particular and i finished my phd on in 2020 um, my phd was mainly about uh, supercritical co2 cycle uh, integrating that with different uh, power sources uh, including conventional and also renewable mainly solar thermal and thermal energy storage and after my uh, phd at cranfield then i uh, worked as a, a research assistant uh, and then followed by a research fellow followed by an academic fellow at cranfield university uh, so for roughly around like one plus years uh, and uh, and then i decided to uh, to uh, india for um, and i'm working currently here at ge research center in bangalore in india and mainly working on uh, carbon capture technologies and also uh, uh, supercritical CO2 uh, cycle, power cycle, how to take that to the next level. So, yeah, over to you, uh, Uh Thank you, uh, Dr. Dinesh, for that introduction. So, uh, myself, uh, Nirmal Madhavan, uh, recently completed my PhD in high temperature computation from Swinburne University of Technology, Melbourne, uh, with research collaborators at Tata Steel's Netherlands. Currently, I am associated as a research assistant uh, for Tata Steel's Netherlands Industrial Research. Prior to PhD, I did my master's in thermal and fluid engineering from IIT Guwahati, and I was working uh, for Indian Naval Scorpion class submarine as senior engineer. I did my bachelor's from Kerala University, and uh, after graduation, I was working with Infosys Engineering Unit uh, as a design and value engineer uh, for Airbus and Bombardier Unit. So uh, now uh, going ahead with a discussion with our uh, guest. So before that, let's get to know about Dr. Kapil Kaag uh, from Arun. Thank you, uh, thank you, Nirmal. Uh, so the scarcity of freshwater resources and the need for additional water supplies is already critical in many arid regions of the world and will be increasingly important in the future. Humans cannot drink saline water, but saline water can be made into fresh water for which there are many uses. 
This process is called as desalination and it is being used more and more around the world to provide people with needed fresh water. Dr. Kapil is currently working as a research associate in the School of Water, Energy and Environment at Cranfield University, UK. He is leading one of the European projects, Reways, stands for Resilient Water Innovation for Smart Economy, sponsored by Horizon 2020. Within the Reways, Solar Water, a company in collaboration with its third party, Cranfield University, is developing the solar dome to reduce energy needs for water desalination and brine free conditioning to obtain value compounds from desalination streams. He is currently working on design and engineering a low cost, low carbon, low carbon emission neutral thermal desalination facility to produce 200 meter cube per day of fresh water for Tenerife Island. He is also the module leader for advanced heat exchanger design and applied thermal energy systems for MSc advanced heat engineering program at Frankfurt University. He is also the admission tutor for this course. He has done his PhD from IIT Rupar in 2021, where he worked on volumetric absorption solar collector driven HTH desalination process and his bachelor's in mechanical engineering in 2015 from Chitkara University, Punjab. His research interests include thermal desalination, solar energy, cooling towers, nanofluids, and heat exchangers. His aim is to develop low cost methods to ensure fresh water supply in economically backward regions of the world. He has published his research works in various reputed international journals such as IJHMT, HMT, Renewable Energy, etc., and has presented his work at various conferences in India and abroad. On behalf of the PhD PDF Scholarship Podcast, I welcome Dr. Kapil to share his thoughts and experience with us. To start our session, foremost, our audience would like to know like why planning your PhD is important and how to plan your PhD effectively. Uh, thank you, Arun, uh, for a very brief uh, introduction. Uh, so, as as you mentioned that, um, like I am working on desalination and uh, uh, like other other areas uh, related to it, such as solar energy and volumetric absorption. So, I realized that uh, planning a PhD, planning your PhD is very important. I would like to give an example, like whenever we are in India and doing PhD, I am generally talking about the PhD scenarios in India. So, we f- we forget to plan our PhD because we. Uh, let me let me uh, let me take you to the when we are preparing for the J examination and you know when we uh, uh, target to uh, get an admission in a very good engineering college. So we start preparing for uh, you know the J exam and the A Triple E exam, which is basically need nowadays. So we start preparing and start worrying about uh, where where I'm going to basically do my engineering. I want to go to best engineering college, and that's how we started preparing two years before or one year before. And the students who don't prepare in their school time, so they need to take a break and either they go to some private engineering college. So in my opinion, what I feel that uh, after just finishing the PhD is not the, is not the job done actually. The, the, the journey starts from there. Uh, after you finish your PhD, the struggle, the real struggle starts from that point where you want to, you know, uh, particularly start your research group or maybe you want to work in a regular, com- uh, on a regular post with a regular post and uh, with some company or maybe some research group. So we always have to plan like where I want to go. If you want to go to some uh, good engineering college uh, to basically teach as a faculty, then you should have the uh, plan in your mind like what I need to have that on my CV so that I can be selected there. So that's why I'm saying that planning a PhD is important. Like you need to publish papers. So publishing papers is also important. I'm not saying that you go to PhD and you know, in the first year you publish five papers. I'm saying that you, uh, for for plan basically you first first year you give yourself to learn the coursework like in india we have to do some five to six uh, you know uh, the coursework courses uh, which we have to pass as well with some some good grades so you learn the basics you learn the fundamentals and then you are basically ready to apply those fundamentals for your research problem so in the first year you basically read a lot actually you don't worry about publishing papers you read a lot you read from the others uh, research work and you see the company browsers, but basically my research is uh, at uh, what what level it is basically working. So that's for the that's for the 
first year and then you start thinking about uh, your research problem so within the first year i believe that within first year or within one and a half year uh, it's, it's a it's like not like i'm saying that uh, everybody can do it in a one and a half year or one year some people are basically really smart because you know uh, during the mtech they are really smart i've seen some people and which they have you know coming from very uh, you know planned uh, planned uh, they already have some plans where do i want to you know uh, do my research work and uh, with which professor i'm going to do my research work so but i'm talking for a general audience actually not like the expert people but i'm just generalizing it uh, so i'm just giving you the general general uh, basically general timeline so within the first one, uh, one first half and one and a half year uh, i think you should be ready with your uh, research questions so the research question should be framed in such a way that currently my research area in which i'm working and the technology which i'm working on is basically at this stage and this is this is my plan actually if i am going to work on this problem then that is going to the benefit to the society or maybe the uh, the technology so if you are ready with those questions then you start working on those uh, research problems and then you uh, you already maybe had identified that what softwares or what experimental test trick i am going to be used for my experiments and within and for the next one and a half years and two years you basically put yourself into that uh, that period where you are basically solving and progressing towards your research problem and then meanwhile <clears throat> you basically see uh, what others are doing and what basically what new research they are also doing so you also identify uh, parallel to me <clears throat> what other research groups are doing and where they are basically taking the technology and you basically uh, build the relationship with, uh, with other research people and uh, uh, other research groups all over the world and you plan your uh, phd in such a way that by the time you finish your uh, <clears throat> three and a half years or four years so you already know the people who are working in the research background in your research area and you already connect with them and you sharing your research uh, progress with them uh, like through conferences uh, and journals and for the last year basically what you need to do you uh, are basically going ahead uh, to develop the further proposals which you are going to submit for any you know sometimes we also know that if you are going to do uh, post doctorate fellowship or maybe some faculty positions they always you know ask you for uh, what is your plan for research your research plan so this is the plan for the five years and after that you won't see any trouble because i have seen people struggling at the in the very end actually when they are about to submit their thesis so they are blank actually what i do, what i need to do there so planning is planning your phd is really important so that before you finish your phd you should have something in your hand like a, like a pdf position or you are basically ready to you know uh, go out in the market uh, hi uh, dr kapil uh, so um, so this question is basically related to uh, publishing papers so uh, when you see in academic uh, research community publication of papers plays a vital role as you mentioned so however with increasing volume of research being produced it's becoming uh, increasingly difficult to stand out and make a meaningful impact of your research so in this context uh, what is the role of publishing papers in academic research and what are the key considerations uh, that researchers should keep in mind when striving to produce uh, a high quality publication yeah <clears throat> so uh, as we all know because we are all, we all are doing research and we have published papers so and we also know the importance of publishing papers whenever we are going to uh, find the job in the market or pdf position so we really understand the importance of publishing papers i believe that publishing papers is really important because that's uh, that shows you that you are an active researcher how will you show that you are an active researcher uh, so publication is the way that you can show that you are doing research and uh, you have you know created some new knowledge uh, for that particular technology or for that research problem so uh, but here i would like to mention um, sometimes you are basically doing very high quality research you know that may have you know really big impact or high impact and that you can publish that paper in a very good journal like impact factor 10 or 12 i mean uh, these days uh, people are debating like for the impact factor that it is not really important but still if we consider it like if the if a particular journal has very high impact factor then it is basically publishing the research of very high quality and very high impact factor but still um, personally i believe that whatever you are doing 
try to find i mean i believe that research is always intuitive actually whatever you are basically doing that is uh, you know your intuition and you can always find the novelty in that uh, in that uh, whatever piece of work you are doing actually so you have to find that uh, what message you are going to deliver in your paper and uh, and obviously for publishing paper you have to show justify the novelty of your paper why why this journal should accept your paper what is the new thing in in that journal so i think that uh, it is not very difficult task to you know because you are already working on your research problem for like for one and a half years or two years and then um, as i mentioned that while while you are planning your phd you should be always knowing that i am going to do i am going to solve this problem and this problem has never been solved this this bit has never been solved actually i mean like uh, there is some gap in that in that technology at this point so you can address that gap and i think uh, then you then it depends on you how much you can you can advance that that level of research or uh, basically that that uh, that technology so according to that you publish you try to publish uh, that paper in a relevant journal so i believe that uh, whatever you are working on uh, that should have obviously some have some novelty but you have to find the novelty before you start publishing your paper yeah i have a follow up question along with that see for example like uh, if you are doing if it is an experimental sort of research and after being continuously uh, done at different conditions of course the experimental uh, results may also change right in that context like if where the situation is something like you don't have a result your result is something like it's changing with respect to your conditions and it's not credible uh, because it's not in line with the intuitive stuff which uh, yeah. we claimed it as no well so in that case um, what would you suggest uh, okay so i would suggest that uh, whatever um, i mean you have to try you have to try to find out what message is giving uh, from the results of your experiment so maybe whatever you are targeting that is not achievable but something else might be there or if it is not like you can also claim that okay i we were trying to do this but this is happening so if you uh follow up the reason for that okay why this is happening so you can always uh, you know uh claim your evidence and this is the evidence and you can uh correlate that experimental results with the theory so this is the theory says i mean it's not it should not be like that if i am doing something and it is it is basically violating the fundamental laws then obviously it is not a science actually but what i'm saying is that if you are uh trying to achieve something and you have uh, set your objectives but it that is not achievable so you may be always uh, link it with the uh, try to find out the reason why this is happening and that the reason you can always mention the pub in the paper so it is not like that you whatever you have thought of that will always come up in your in front of you i mean you also know that the, in the past we have seen researchers people are trying to do something but they come up with something else actually and that's uh, make a very big research and good research thank you for sharing that insight um, i think uh, dinesh can go ahead yeah uh, i have a one follow up question on uh, you know the, the current topic what we are discussing uh, indeed when we are preparing any paper and trying to publish it right for any reputed journal or something indeed everybody i think would agree here uh, in the panel everybody will undergo rejections right so uh, how do we really handle that pressure and the situation and the frustration that comes along right and uh, per- particularly when it's a first you know phd student that trying to pay you know publish the first paper and how you know ha- such si- such situations will happen to you or you know and how, what do you do be your advice for uh, for the students yeah that's a that's a very relevant question for all the researchers uh, okay so particularly talking about uh, uh, indian scenario Uh, whenever we are basically approaching iits or good institutes for the phd admissions we always face rejections if if i am if i want to do phd at iit bombay but i would never get i mean i may never get admission in iit bombay but i may get some tier tier 2 iit tier 3 iit and that's what happened with me as well so rejection is a part of life i would say it simply but particularly talking about your research paper because you have put your so much effort and you have hope high hopes with that because obviously that is going to give you the phd in the end and that is you know uh, your phd supervisors are <clears throat> basically trying to you know convince uh, trying to convey a message without publishing papers it would be very difficult you know to finish the phd within the relevant time period so that's how the pressure builds up i would say that don't listen to uh, your phd supervisor like if he's saying you 
that without publishing papers you won't, you won't get be you won't get phd he's trying to basically motivate you so that you put your hard work and you know i mean it can be sometimes like uh we can't ignore this fact like uh, there there is a uh, not there can be a very high pressure which should not be there on the student but if you see it in a positive manner because that's how the, the life works we have to you know set out our positive mindset and we we keep on working those things but personally uh, there can be some scenarios where uh, reviewer is basically giving you very you know irrelevant comments regarding your paper so try to ignore that and uh, there are so many journals you can you can basically if you if you really think that the comments you have received after your first um, submission if you if these comments are relevant then obviously you should try to improve your paper otherwise if you see that okay i have put my best effort and this journal this manuscript which i prepared that doesn't require any modification so you can try in some other journal so that's what i believe i mean talking about handling the pressure pressure is always there i mean i i want to convey this message uh in phd the pressure is nothing but as you go in postdoc the pressure will be higher and whenever you are basically having the regular faculty position the pressure will be much more higher i mean this can be sound really you know uh, maybe uh, how should i say that uh, researchers uh, basically doing phd they will say that okay this guy is talking about like a 50 year old guy but that's that's how the reality is actually because at that time you will be having some different pressure because you want to try to bring funding from the you know funding agencies writing proposals to bst and that's a very very big thing actually because six months you are preparing the proposal and uh, and that's and sometimes the outcome can be zero because with the publication the outcome is certain actually i mean in within one year or maybe two years the outcome is certain but with proposals the outcome may not be certain so try to handle the pressure that's what i can say right okay yeah that's, that's a good good you know uh, explanation and yeah i would uh, i would echo the same as similar as well like uh, the more the responsibility you have and uh, the more the, yes <laughs> more the yeah, pressure you. builds up right so uh, yeah thanks uh, for the explanation and maybe if i can um, you know move on to the next one which is actually we touched upon the similar lines uh, already you mentioned that you know uh, when you are working on a phd it's not just you know sitting in a lab and then do the uh, work for you know 3 years to 5 years right uh, in isolation it's all about like doing the phd know the, what the others you know uh, doing and which labs are doing and establish the connections and everything right and also maybe attend the conference and then do the, you know uh, establish the connection and mainly the networking that plays a pretty critical role so what would you you know uh, so in that context right uh, what extra activities you you know uh, you would advise a phd student right uh, should should at least think about doing when he is you know undergoing the phd journey uh, in in his you know, in the five years or so uh so this is you know uh my favorite part of this uh is going to be my favorite part of this uh, podcast because i did so many things when i was in phd you know start, uh, like attending conferences and uh, uh trying to uh see the opportunities where i can go in the foreign universities and try to work there for 6 months i obviously i had some opportunities but uh the covid came and i could not go there so that that's what happened to me but i would uh, list some of the activities which a phd scholar may think of i mean that depends on person to person sometimes you know you are very uh, uh, introvert and you don't talk to people much and you don't even ask your supervisor that okay i am liking this opportunity i want to go to this conference or maybe some internship i want to do or you are not basically uh, socially well connected and you are not using linkedin uh, other platforms so you basically try to sit in your lab and you know just finish your research work but that obviously that have, that differs from person to person but generally speaking um uh, first of all you should try to build a habit that you are talking to your colleagues the phd colleagues uh because i was in iit roper and that was very small iit because the campus was very small and you know it was just you know uh, in a the, the building construction was uh, you know just uh, in a uh, like in a phase of uh, developing so we had the opportunity that all the scholars from all the departments were in a single building actually and sometimes we have seen that scenario three research group people working in the same laboratory and there are 10 10 and 15 scholars in the same big lab actually and we were you know discussing about uh, our research ideas or maybe some pressure which might have received from the phd uh, like our supervisor so we always try to share and that's how i uh, build that habit uh, whenever i go for tea or or a break or maybe some weekend 
i would go and chat with them like what are you doing actually so that's how you build your you know communication skills like what to ask or what how to basically communicate so that's the first thing i would suggest because you will definitely going to be learn a lot from this this kind of activity then obviously you you should try to plan two to three conferences during your phd in india you should try to attend relevant to your field and you see that okay uh, these are the people working in my area and they are really good researchers and you go there and present your research work as well and you try to interact with them okay this is what i am doing what do you see the potential in that kind of work and what can i do more to basically uh, realize that technology in a real scenario or maybe whatever targets you have set for your phd and at least one or two conferences you should try to you know uh, plan for you know abroad presenting your research work in abroad like asm conference is very big conference in mechanical engineer and i had the opportunity to uh, to go there and present my work and i met so many people which i admire in my area like professor lenard and i met there and i also got the opportunity to visit mit uh, i saw the lab uh, the people and uh, uh, one company uh, which is work, uh, basically working in my area i mean like they build the technology and they are now running the business so i also got the opportunity to interact with with those um, company personals so like that you can visit you can visit some industry uh, industrial sites relevant to your research area you can visit some labs uh, by by sharing a message with them okay i i'm researching uh, i'm interested in your uh, research work and this is how our research work links and uh, in in addition to this you can try to find out some opportunities like bhaskar advance fellowship or newton baba fellowship there are some fellowships which provides you the opportunity to go to the foreign universities and spend some time there and that's how you will build co- uh, building co- collaborations and networks and try to see how the research environment is different from you know from india and in other countries so this will open definitely open your mind and you will see the uh, you will see the vision for your research and um, in addition to that linkedin is a very good platform where all the researchers are there and they are sharing their messages and you know uh, the companies relevant relevant to your research work are also there and they are basically working on similar technology and they are trying to te- take the technology to the next level so you should also um, try to get in touch with some company people or some professors in foreign countries and uh, you know maybe try to have a chat with them or you can all post covid we all know that we can also do some collaborations online and we can do some internship online so these are the range of activities which would definitely help you to land somewhere after your phd okay yeah thanks for elaborating that maybe uh, just a following uh, you know thoughts on that also um it's like obviously uh, you know when somebody you know is introvert as you exactly mentioned and they are trying to you know uh, talk with a new professor and uh, particularly through emails right and trying to make a arrange a visit and so on and probably find a fellowship uh, to support it but then really the the first email and you know how to draft it and how to really reach out to somebody uh, who is you know who is uh, completely you never really uh, saw them before right at the first time and uh, do you, you know do you have any particular like advice or some uh, for the students to who is you know undergoing this uh, you know they are in this situation now what sort of uh, thoughts they need to uh, you know when what what they need to think about when they're drafting the email right? um, so that that will that will that, that in a, you know uh, likely to have more probability to get a response back yeah uh, that's also a very good question and uh, uh, this is also uh, the point when we are the point came when we are trying to find the phd positions or the postdoc positions Uh, sometimes we tend to miss the details actually we don't read about the other research group uh, you know in a very detailed manner and we don't try to look at their what they are working on actually so you might have seen that uh, let's suppose i'm talking about a particular research group and 3 uh, years back he was doing something uh, similar to your to your research but now they have stopped the activities and now they have basically doing some some different different stuff so you should be aware of like what they are currently working on which project they are working on actually and that's how you can read from the you know their papers and their 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 websites actually but particularly talking about the message the message you want to put uh, put forward so firstly um, there are there are few points which you should always keep in mind 
uh, trying to introduce yourself like i am a phd scholar okay i am working on this uh, this field technology and have published this paper or basically you share about the um, your phd journey this is what you have done till now and this is what you are aiming for and if you go to this particular research lab how you are going to benefit from your from your uh, from that visit actually so that that message should be clear the objective should be clear what objective you want to achieve by going there it's not simply that i want to go there and see what they are working on and how the research environment is different that is basically inherent but obviously you should be having some high level advantage which you want to achieve by going there so that message should be clear like if i uh, i maybe i am lacking some facility i don't have some particular research facility which i can work in my you know in my home country but that facility is available in that laboratory or maybe they are working on some modeling techniques which they are expert in so like that uh, the message should be very clear if the message is not clear they are not going to entertain you that's what i believe okay yeah th- thanks for clarifying uh, w- w- yeah just to add uh, some more flavors to this uh, you know extra curic- uh, extra activities right uh, what a phd student uh, to uh, think about is like um, being a phd student and working on let's say you know a particular topic uh, they, uh, there can be a situation that they might think okay i need to maybe connect work with a particular uh, you know whoever is working on this particular field for example let's say in a cfd and they are doing maybe multiple you know multi phase physics or something they tends to maybe look at okay who is a world leader and then you know uh, in renowned in this area and then try to establish a connection and how do you uh, view the point of like let's say you know maybe who are working on cfd they need to also talk with okay somebody company somebody working on maybe you know a thermodynamics or somebody is working on maybe chemical process engineering process design or system design so something you know some you know like a multidisciplinary activities and you know how do you value such establishing such connections when you are you know uh, during your phd which uh, how whether do you think when you, you know do you uh, promote such activities or you think like you know maybe we might need to uh, you know establish it's it's worth more uh, to establish a connection uh, within the area where we are working on but maybe uh, you know it's the other one is okay from a not uh, from a you know personal connections but maybe not more uh, from a from a technical orientation right uh, how do you how do you view this oh uh, yeah um, i i got your point um, so i think that uh, for a starting um, you can make connections with the people who are working on a research problem similar to what you are doing actually not like exactly similar but similar to your uh, research research area right. like i am working on um, let's for example for example uh, i can i can uh, you know explain it very well by giving my own uh, example so i am working on thermal desalination and thermal desalination has so many techniques but i am working on one particular technique but arun might be working on some other different technique but we have you know a similarity like you know the the basic fundamentals are really same but arun is trying to achieve something i am trying to achieve something so like that i can build connections with the people like arun and you know myself so this is one one uh, one good example i can give you should always try to make connections such connections uh, with the people who are working on your uh, similar to your research area but other than that Uh, let's suppose for my research area i am using a particular skill set like some softwares matlab or maybe cfd or maybe transis or some other other and if i see that if i know if i if i somehow have the opportunity to basically discover like what are the uh, research areas in which these skill sets are heavily required then i can also uh, you know get in touch with the such people uh, working on whatever field it is because once you are out of your phd people will going to ask you what skills do you have what do you know like what fundamentals do you know do you know like modeling cfd modeling numerical modeling or experimental uh, you know uh, you are expert in doing experiments uh, building up the experiment test, test trick or modeling so i would i all i would always suggest like um, because my professor used to tell me whatever training we are providing you that is that is more than sufficient you are you have having a max experience with the modeling theoretical modeling and the numerical modeling and then you are basically building your experimental test trick so i don't think so uh, for a researcher you don't need you need any other things so particularly in your, during a phd you should always focus on what skills you are learning the technology learning about the technology is different is a different aspect we should always read some papers and you know uh, update our knowledge about what is happening 
but what skills i am basically adding on my cv like matlab python machine learning these days machine learning is a big thing and people are now using the machine learning aspect in your research in our research back uh, area so these are the skill set which i always you know mentioned that okay you should uh, try to put in your cv so that will always help actually yeah okay thank you it's a very uh, good view point there uh, over to you arun for the next question so to follow uh, it up like uh, as you already have said that like uh, paper publications and we have to start looking for a postdoc like from before the last year of the phd so what are other the prerequisite or preparations that are required uh, by looking for a postdoc and prof okay so um, if you are looking for postdoc positions and you have set you have prepared a mind that you are obviously going to do you know a pdf in uh, you know out of india or maybe in india uh, firstly you should be well aware of who are the people working in your research background and what kind of projects the first thing is that what kind of projects you are you are basically going to work on what is your objective after your phd i mean what kind of technology either do you want to continue in the same uh, area or the relevant area okay so the first message should be very clear but it doesn't always work because sometimes you know uh, the funding might not be available in that available in that area but you are having a different skill sets and uh, that skill sets may be required for different project or maybe the same project you are working on your phd uh, i would suggest i would start with uh, you ha- already have your network connections in the linkedin group actually you have a very good linkedin profile where you have added all the details about your phd and your academic background and the research you are doing and then you try to build connections uh, with the people who are working in your research area uh, and the postdocs and phds of that research group as well and then uh, you see that uh, after that while applying for the phd position you need some documents like your very good cv academic cv which we call like list of publications and your you know your very good cv which is having the detailed uh, view of what you have done in your phd not simply writing about your phd from where it is that's not going to help actually you should have some uh, details about your phd work i i built this i developed this modeling framework or i did the experiment on this and achieved something so maybe a uh, couple of lines you can write about your phd work so that will always help actually uh because the first thing uh, the person is going to open i think that that's your cv actually and then uh, already try to have a very good cover letter uh for uh, because you are going to put your message on that cover letter but why are you basically applying for that research lab and what skill sets you have and what do you see after that so that's that's a that's a second thing a cover letter sometimes in europe uh, they also ask for motivation letter and then uh, sometimes they may ask you whether do you have any proposal research proposal which you want to work on so i would suggest that two to three proposals uh, sometimes two page proposal or three page proposal you should be ready during your phd i mean before you start applying you should be ready and six months before you write your phd you should start looking for the uh, these pdf positions so these are the only things which are which which you required but the one thing which is a key ingredient here is your connections because you can't uh, always you know go to each and university website and uh, try to find people on that website so the linkedin is a very good platform where you can always be connected with your people uh, with the people working in the research area and they will share the updates regularly so i i suggest uh, because i am also a mentor for your pedia which is a consultancy uh, providing service to the phd's and postdocs uh, so there i was providing the linkedin training so i always used to say that Uh, use the LinkedIn like we are using Facebook and Instagram or basically some other social networking site, because you will always receive the up-to-date notifications. Like some professor was sitting, uh, and you know he has updated the position. Like I am hiring for PhD positions or postdoc positions, and you will see the uh, up-to-date notifications. Okay, I have. So a- I, I, I do have a follow-up question. Uh, so. we talked about uh, handling rejections of phd applications as well as handling rejections of the paper so uh, often it is uh, like postdoc positions are often rarely to mostly it is advised for a single position so uh, if our applications gets rejected is it as a, is, is it is a good thing to uh, send an email to the professor asking for, uh, like the reasons uh, for the rejections or 
the possible ways by which we can improve our cv or something like that uh, okay uh, if you are particularly talking about the open jobs like uh, where the job notification is already you know posted on some uh, like uh, or either on the university website or maybe on the linkedin and then you try to uh, submit the application and sometimes you receive that okay uh, your profile was very good but uh, you know we are this time we won't go to we won't give go with your profile that is just a simple message it doesn't uh, give you the detailed feedback i would suggest that it is always understanding that, that they are not interested in the skill sets that i have um, but i don't think so that they will mind if you are like drafting an email and uh, you may be asking you asking them uh, can you give me some advice because it is always understood that okay uh, he is basically looking for a person with having some different experience so it's up to you actually i mean it's not it's a subjective question actually subjective answer okay thank you over to you uh hi kapil like i have a follow up question as well like so uh um, thinking from a, a student perspective who's stepping into phd or who's just about to finish the phd uh what does a post doctoral position offer that a phd is not uh, basically covering it up okay or so what why is it required to do a post doctorate uh, is it mandatory uh, even if you are already doing uh, done a post uh, phd from an international university is it necessary or like for what streamline of uh, career a postdoc is required so before that um, uh, i would uh, i would uh, like to mention this thing here if we if you are a phd then it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be in the academics always like dinesh is sitting here and you know he is working with a very good company so like that we have to broad our vision and we have to set out our plan like if we if i don't get a don't get a lecturership position or uh trying not not getting an opportunity to be in academics i can go to some company and do do the research research activities i mean teaching you can do anywhere you know these days we can make the videos and do the teaching and post the videos on youtube so that will give you teaching experience okay if you really want to do teaching then you can do it on youtube actually but talking about the research lab uh because you want to do research so that you can join some r and d laboratory the first thing is that because uh nowadays people are thinking that okay i should only be getting the iits and nits and if i don't get an it or iit i mean my career is basically gone so this this uh, um, status quo thinking should be you know uh, should be you know eliminated from our minds actually uh, we should be always looking for some different kind of jobs like r and d jobs in some company or maybe uh, development jobs some other jobs in the company and the other question which you asked uh, what the pdf is offering sometimes you really want to get into the academics like uh, i i want to go to iit nit or bits milani or some other engineering college so they already have some the requirements like uh, we are going to you know basically it is the eligibility criteria which says that you should be having some one or two or three years of post doctoral experience so that is the one thing which is already you know a, a requirement which is already been set up, set out there the other thing is that uh i would suggest because when i came from uh, from india here uh i see the research how how these people are doing research and they are trying to develop the technology because at the moment the net zero theme came everybody you know basically set out their agenda that they are going to do research in in that uh, topic and they are basically trying to achieve that scenario so these these people like western countries people they they pick up the technology you know very uh, at a very uh the next moment when it comes to you know uh, in their mind that okay this is going to the future so they are really fast actually i be- i believe that it doesn't matter whether they are going to build in 5 years or 10 years but they always start thinking about this that kind of scenario so it will it will widen their vision uh when you are basically doing the post doc sometimes it can be really harsh i mean uh, you are always publishing papers you have so much pressure and you know uh you have so much so much of work but if you uh, really think that uh if you are happy in your home country uh with lower salary because we in india we have a very low salary uh, for the post doc uh so i mean uh, with post doc you can have some monetary benefits if you are uh, you know manage to save some money so that is always there and you you will set out the collaborations actually you will have 
collaboration networks uh, with that university and you know you will get a different form of reputation <laughs> because uh, indians always think like that okay i mean he has done his postdoc from that laboratory so he might be good so it's more lo- sort of a psychological thing uh, you mean to say in one aspect um, rather than a skill aspect right uh not really but uh, like i am doing my postdoc here and uh, i got the opportunity to teach the msc students as well and i'm handling uh, two modules uh, for the master program so i'm getting a really different kind of experience here and uh, very soon i am going to tr- uh, start my second mint i mean i'm going to work with the university of birmingham and one one company so i believe the second mint is for the you know people who are basically reach a very high level in their you know career level but with sridays i am getting this opportunity so everybody will get a different experience so that's how you know postdoc can offer you sometimes you know different opportunities so it's really different from the phd because in phd you are always limited to your your research work but in postdoc you can you know you can uh, you can take some initiatives yourself like trying to collaborate with the other people like 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 we i'm collaborating with you guys i'm i'm trying to make a post podcast here uh, and um, i am basically some day i'm going to start my own research group so i start i start building my connections and uh, you know uh, talking to the people and developing the proposal and submitting the proposal here and uh, you know there are so many activities which a postdoc can do but that varies from situation to situation actually Thank you for that elaborate insight. Uh, I think um, Dhinesh can go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we we touched upon already the uh, we need to look for uh, a, a fellowship abroad and so on to make a visit and all these right to establish the connections. And uh, along these lines, right? Um, maybe uh, and also you mentioned that you uh, recent you are now uh, go, in a few months you are going to go for a second month opportunity. Uh, so uh, obviously, like you might have written already a proposal for that, and then that would have uh, you know uh, got fly through and uh, like uh, wanna leads to winning a fellowship. So and uh, this two are like in two different levels, right? Like for a PhD student, and then you know uh, obtaining a fellow uh, for a prestigious fellowship, open um, abroad fellowship, and then how do we? Uh, what is really important um, when they are drafting a fellowship proposal, right? Um, at that in a PhD level. And then also similarly, if you can maybe because you already uh, got, you know, as a postdoc and you wrote some uh, like a proposals, right? Maybe European and Arizona, same along those lines. And in when you are doing a postdoc and then uh, looking for a external funding, right? Um, and then how how that differentiate and what what additional thinking you are putting into that, right? Uh, maybe if you can give it in two different levels. Yeah. Uh, if I'm particularly talking about the PhD. so in phd you can't you can't be a co pi or maybe pi okay so you are asked to write a proposal like my supervisor asked me to draft a proposal and uh, with that proposal i was going to win the money for my research actually research work uh, obviously uh, the professor is be- basically behind you and he will support you uh, but in if you are going to win the funding for the co research grant which is i mean talking about india and particularly in phd obviously the objective should be very high and you know you should be the f- the first thing is that how much funding you are targeting if is the big funding then that means it is a really you know you need high end equipments and uh, uh, you have set out three to four objectives which are really you know which require some time which requires additional manpower to be hired and some uh, you know uh, some experimental legs to be built up so uh, the first thing is that you have to set out the objectives which uh, you know depends upon the funding amount you are basically requesting from that funding agency if it is some, if it is a small proposal like for 6 months you are going to work or one one year going to work i mean i'm not saying talking about the level of uh, your writing but the level of the proposal the level of the research work you are going to do with that funding actually so in phd uh, there are two scenarios the one is that you are writing the proposal for your professor and he will guide you but sometimes there are opportunities like you are going for you are going to apply for the commonwealth shared scholarship scholarship to come to uk for for a period and then you are basically writing some bits okay uh, i am doing this work in my phd and this kind of work is also being done at your laboratory and i am going to benefit from that laboratory so in that scenario the objectives are not that much high but it is just a knowledge exchange program and it is just a visiting uh, exchange students program 
but particularly talking about the in the pdf uh, it is really expected that you draft a very high quality proposal and you win you know a uh, high amount of uh, how amount of money like the money money is basically the factor here i believe that so if, if it is a you know like a epsc proposal uh, let's let me give an example if it is a epsc proposal like in uk so they are basically sometimes the requirement is that uh, they are they want you from a very fundamental proposal like the research is very fundamental sometimes so there you need to put a lot of hard work in that you know trying to build up a fundamental problem and set out three to four research questions and you know uh, that's how this work has been done till now and this is the gap and what we are going to do that is basically going to solve the problem in that manner so these are three or four things which uh, a proposal should have but obviously that that is going to be depending upon you uh, which funding agency you are going to target i i, I think that i answered my question or not uh yeah you you did yeah it was a yeah, good answer and uh may, maybe just a, a follow up uh, on the similar lines right uh, when when somebody uh, when you know uh, somebody trying to develop such proposals let's let's talk about now a you know, pdf level when uh, they are trying some um, some funding from external agency say epsrc or maybe uh, european or some uh, project proposals uh, then when, when they are trying to formulate that like wh- what do you think uh, are the important steps they need to really uh, like think about in order to really you know before they really go about like finalizing the proposals and all what what really uh, matters in terms of like first of all you know uh, networking to drafting to uh, right uh, what are all the steps they need to go through and what what is really important uh so the, like you said about the networking so we can always think like who is going to be the partners on this project and then we try to reach out to them like i am and before that if you are reaching someone so you should have a draft proposal ready with you like the draft idea maybe uh, some some two to three pages idea that okay uh, this is my idea this is the background and this is what i'm planning for and let's uh, let's let's come together and draft the proposal so the networking is a very key thing here but that obviously you can you can find the people uh, in your network because you are already doing phd or if you uh, didn't make any connections but you can you can make connections uh, but it should be you know very early not at the last moment uh, then uh, within the proposal i would say that novelty should be very high because uh, obviously who is going to give you the money that that, they, that is going to be look like what is the new thing what is the really new thing here and sometimes the requirement is like that let's suppose i am giving you a particular example about the uk i am going to work in thermal dissemination or maybe the csp technology but the but the solar radiation is not appropriate uh, it is very good here in uk so the funding agency is not going to fund those projects actually so sometimes we you might have to see that uh, what country you are in and what kind of the research are important for that particular country so that's that's the one thing and in your proposal the, the novelty should be very high and you should be you know uh, putting so much effort like you know reading about the others work what others what is the technology at this stage at the current moment whether it has been implemented or not so there are basically we talk about the tr levels technology readiness level so the message should be very clear uh, and uh, you know um, it's it's a kind of a basically iterative exercise you you are basically drafting something and you share it with someone and then they will you know uh, give their comments and then you will going to revise it so it's a basically iterative exercise nobody is you know uh, perfect in writing the proposal just a basically iterative exercise you keep on iter- uh, you keep on revising the proposal and final design in in a good shape actually yeah that, that's really a, a, good, a good insight and uh, maybe just a, a another follow up thing on the you know uh, getting a feedback right like particularly when you are writing a first proposal as uh, like maybe you know, in the early on in writing a research proposals how important do you think you know maybe getting a proposal a uh, like feedback from maybe your coll- colleagues or maybe somebody uh, can be just on the grammar or can be something in the technical novelty itself like uh, you know communication how clearly you drafted it how uh, how do you think that you know that step is very important right uh, to get the feedback from others before you you know submit your proposal but, uh, and then secondly one uh, one another thing is also maybe when you are uh, applying for such fellowships right prestigious fellowships and uh, how much you think you know uh, how to be well, uh, a guy has to prepare his profile or his cv to to you know uh, what 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 additional thing you need to kind of like focus on which is kind of reiterating to the previous questions as well right um, what additional yeah. thing he might need to uh, you know think about in order to be more successful uh, uh, increase the chance of winning 
okay yeah uh, this question is uh, very very uh, i mean really relevant for the people who are looking for the these prestigious fellowships uh, before they submit their phd so the first question is feedback feedback helps you to improve you know uh, sometimes your grammar or sometimes uh, the alignment of the proposal actually okay the feedback is really important it could be the feedback from your colleagues maybe from your phd supervisor but you should always have some people in your network that you can share the proposal with you and you know because you are thinking in in a in a in a basically uh, in in a particular manner but the other people other person might have different opinions so he might you know uh, share your experience share his experience with you and basically that will try to evolve the uh, you know the proposal in a in a good shape actually so the feedback general thing is that feedback always helps you particularly talking about the fellowships so as i mentioned that uh, before you submit your phd and as you are going to plan your phd in a you know in a proper manner and if you are aiming for the fellowships like um, what kind of fellowships we have sometimes the swiss doctoral fellowship and uh, newton uh, nehru nehru post doctoral fellowship uh, for the post docs uh, which you are going to uh, work in the usa and uh, sometimes the marie curie okay so if you are particularly aiming for these prestigious fellowships these are really competitive actually and you should stand out you know in a very huge number of applicants but there are some preparations which you always need to do before you apply for those uh, fellowships so the first thing is that uh, you should be ready with your idea i am not saying that it should be very good proposal but you have the idea in your mind that okay if you are going to apply for this fellowship you are going to work on that project and obviously you need to find a host so you have to find that host that that research uh, person which is basically working in that similar area and he is basically ready to host you so once the once he agrees to host you then you are basically going to develop the proposal you know by having a regular discussion with him and that's how you basically draft the, the submit the proposal and then you might have a very good chance of you know uh, getting accepted this uh, fellowship so it's not like a general job application it's a basically proposal which you are preparing in a collaboration with that faculty member which you are going to work with but yeah thank you thank you for the yeah. very clear answer right. oh, oh, you need more. yeah uh, thank you dr for that insight and uh, so uh, this is something uh, which is more reciprocating to what uh, you have already said uh, so uh, like what is the ideal time for a, a phd student to start applying for a, a post doctoral uh, position and what are the chances of Uh, how can you maximize the chances of getting into a postdoctoral position and uh, whether do we need to apply only to the advertised positions or as you mentioned do uh, we have to extend our network and seek whether they have any existing position upcoming so what is the best optimized way in your okay. perspective yeah yeah so uh... last year in december i went to iit roper and there was a event matrix and uh, i did a presentation how to find a postdoc positions so i shared these things with them they asked me, uh, me the same question uh, like how do we find the positions just by emailing uh, because i am using linkedin for like last two years and you know uh, i'm using it like a facebook or instagram i i, I forgot to use facebook or instagram actually uh, but what i what i have observed is the situation is has now been changed or the situation is different in different countries let me give an example in uk if you drop an email to somebody like i want to work with you uh, he is going to say that okay i have you know submitted the uh, fundings like the proposals and if i am going to receive the uh, if the funding is approved then obviously i am going to hire some pdfs and you may start working with me your profile is very good but that does, doesn't make any sense actually i mean he is going to advertise those positions on the open open platforms or the university website so i am going to give an example in uk and europe the scenario works in this manner if they want to hire somebody they have to advertise these positions on the university website or maybe the jobs.ac.uk for the uk or maybe some other platforms or professor sharing the uh, advertisement on their linkedin channel actually linkedin profile so that's how so like i was telling you uh getting a linkedin profile and connect making connections with the people who are working in your area is very very you know important thing actually you should not miss that thing miss that bite in your uh, phd 
this is about the europe actually and the uk but if i i'm talking about the usa obviously there are not many positions advertised in on the open channels and you know sometimes the professor might share the the message that i'm basically going to have a postdoc but in usa the similar fashion is working which is used to work for like years you dropping an email and if he has the funding then he will basically going to say okay let's have a chat so there is not a single way to find these positions i would suggest to go and follow each and every way each and every path multiple paths is basically multiple routes you have to follow to reach to the one position actually yeah and i have one more question like uh, what is the ideal time to f- uh, finish the phd or like for example in iits like there is a sort of tendency or psychological aspect like five years fixed mm-hmm. like it doesn't matter whether you're completing your objectives within three years still two more years you have to extend yourself right so um in your perspective uh, what do you see the difference uh, uh, when you go to uk uh, how the phd is carried out there and what is the suggestion that uh, you're basically trying to uh, or what is the mentality that a phd student who is joining in iit should have is it like a five year i'm going to be in this uh, area yeah in your perspective how do you see that difference okay let me let me first motivate uh, those fellows uh, which they are thinking that my phd is getting delayed and i'm not going to get, uh, get anything so one of my friend he he uh, he he was my senior writer but and he finished his phd in 7 years okay and after that he got a very good postdoctoral position in uk and which is for you know the the funding is for 5 to 6 years so his life is little bit relaxed and he, you know he can he can do uh, very good research and you know have some relaxing time in uk uh, i know i mean I, I I think uh, you got it but what I'm trying to say here so the the very first thing is that we should not waste time I mentioned that uh, just like in uh, in the school days we don't have much time to waste and you know we are always targeting that I should be getting into that college my dream college for my engineering education like in a phd uh, we should not always you know uh, waste our time but at the same time you are trying to do something new and that might take some time Let, let's uh, let's give let's give you my example i was trying to build a setup actually for my experiments and i had to talk to uh, you know 50 people every day uh, just to just to make sure that just to you know uh, receive a yes from them okay they are going to make my setup because it was a small setup and the company was not ready to make that setup because they were not going to find any you know monetary benefits out of my out of my uh, that experimental work actually so sometimes the problem can be like that you are obviously going to do something new and that new is not basically known to you what the new thing will come up so that the, the the timing is not basically the criteria here the research quality whatever the research work you are going to basically uh, do that should have some quality and that should have some impact and that is going to take the technology to next level so but i believe that 5 years is more than enough and if you are basically delaying your phd like because we have seen the covid times you know Uh, people uh, losing their family members and other other stuff came so if your covid if your phd is impacted by covid then obviously 6 years is not like too much but the objective should be clear in mind that i am not going to waste my time i am ready to put my 100% effort and i am going to take the technology to a next level because uh, unless or until you are achieving something out of your phd that doesn't make any sense that is not going to give you satisfaction and if you are going to work in your you know uh work in academics and researcher so uh, that's that's an important thing but particularly talking about the scenario here um uh, here the phd is basically the phd's are hired on a project like i my professor my professor has written some proposal and he is going to put on the proposal like i am going to hire a phd student which is going to work on that subject and the fellowship is for 3 years because the project tenure is for 3 years or 4 years so within the 3 years i am going to finish my work and you don't need to co- do any course work here and you don't have any ta duty here so you know it's like a it's like a win win situation so 3 years you are dedicated towards your work and you don't need to publish any papers so without publishing papers you can do your phd here because i have seen i've 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 heard from people i'm not very good at writing papers so i'm done here i'm going to do work in industry so the scenario is different but keeping the scenario in mind 
our indian scenario is different we need to publish papers we need to do very good research but at the same time we should not be demotivated uh, by seeing other people in the other countries our situation is different but we can do best uh, that's what i believe and people have done best so that's my, that is the message i want to give to the people who are doing phd in india we we can do brilliant things even we don't have funding it is just about your thinking actually i mean uh, what do you think what are you thinking about your research problem so there are always some ways uh, to finish your phd that was quite inspiring uh, so that was some more, more motivating for the indian uh, phd students actually so uh, there is one more question actually uh, this is a, a question from one of the phd members his name is mithun so he was basically asking uh, just read out the question i wish to begin my phd career uh, my research career i am very keen to know what kind of talents and cv they look for or milestones that i have to complete before applying phd position i studied in a private engineering college with little emphasis on research so my research uh, and paper publication history is low can you please tell me what should i do so as to build a strong cv for applying a phd position is a uh, cv required actually for a, applying a phd position okay let me uh, let me share one story with this fellow uh, i did my phd with dr himanshu tyagi and professor sarit kumar das so the sarit kumar das uh, he was a director at of, at iit roopad sarit kumar das uh, professor das uh, basically is uh, has done all the three degrees like bachelor's masters and phd from a very ordinary engineering college rec okay and now he became the <clears throat> dean of iit madras and then he became the director and now he is basically a professor a high rank professor at iit madras so the college is not the criteria but what you learn is very important so this fellow needs to understand what what the what kind of work he has done during his masters what skills he has acquired whatever skills he has learned he try he should try to put the skills on that cv on his cv like i know these things i have learned these things and if he misses some skills like he he sometimes you know i'm tech in private engineering college or maybe some other engineering college we don't put so much effort uh, into our mtech thesis and the mtech thesis is quite normal so he can go out and join some research lab in uh, I, mean, i mean like he can go and work with some professor in iit as a junior research fellow and uh, try to gain some research experience and from that level he can try to basically uh, apply for the phd positions but let me tell you because uh, i have been working with your pedia for the last one year uh, this consultancy has sent so many students to the uh, for phd positions in abroad in usa europe and uh, australia all are from the ordinary college actually nobody is from iit or basically nit or some other very good colleges so the message should be very clear that you know these skills you know these subjects and i want to do phd in that in that subject area and i have learned these these skills and you are also working on these kind of work and i'm really motivated to do this kind of research work but in phd the expectation in while you are searching for phd as an entrance student the expectation is really low actually from you they just want to see whether do you know the fundamentals or just one or two softwares like matlab or comsol or something else that is the only requirement You don't need to be from a very good, high reputed engineering college from MI, from IIT or so. So the message should be very clear. So you don't you don't need to worry about uh, uh, he did his PhD from uh, sorry he did his bachelor's or master's from a very ordinary college. I am also from a very ordinary college, Chitkara University. And uh, when I was in Chitkara University, I didn't I studied the thermodynamics and heat transfer, but the thermodynamics I know at this stage that was different <laughs> that thermodynamics I was knowing at that stage actually. So. so everybody is i want to just give you one message everybody is coming from a different circumstance from a different background and as uh, professor das used to tell like life is a marathon it's not a 100 meter race so in a 100 meter race the start is really important but in the marathon the start is not important just keep going and you know the stamina is important so you should have the stamina to keep going and you know obviously you are going to reach uh, to that level where you want to uh, see yourself that's a powerful message uh, thank you uh, kapil for sharing that insight as well yeah i think uh, we are almost uh, about to wind up the session uh, dr dinesh can give a summary about the session yeah indeed it was a very good interaction and also uh, the end some uh, good stories and uh, to motivate the students uh, yeah 
Um, first of all, uh, yeah, we, we discussed really about like um, how uh, how really uh, a PhD student to plan about his PhD in the very early on uh, first year to have the fundamentals and then yeah, followed by establishing the research question by one and a half year or something by that period roughly. And also, mainly uh, there was a strong emphasis to connect with the uh, research and know the uh, other people and then establish the network and uh, also look for funding to uh, establish it. And we touched upon how to write some proposals, good proposals to look for some fundings uh, to, uh, to make that you know, uh, visit realizable, right? Uh, and then also there was a, we, we also discussed on uh, how important to attend a conference, prestigious conference, so that which will facilitate uh, you know, meeting such, uh, such a prestigious uh, uh, professors or uh, like whoever we admire right in the particular area and also we uh, we really uh, there was a t- discussion also on the uh, the what we are expecting by the postdoctoral fellow uh, postdoctoral journey right uh, which is not really covered from the phd journey itself then how important to uh, what, what so in you know we need to focus on when we are applying for a postdoctoral fellowship like particularly like you know we need to have a strong because of the message was very clear like need to have a uh, very clear uh, linkedin profile and then also need to be very up to date uh, with what uh, the particular professor we are trying to reach out is doing currently and also build a strong cv and emphasis should be given to uh, what the current achievements are right uh, or whatever you have achieved and a strong emphasis given should be given to that um, and then also obviously the cover letter uh, should echo the similar uh, on the similar lines Right. And this is all uh, we discussed. And finally, obviously, we discussed on the, the ideal time and uh, what what we need to take on for to complete the PhD. Uh, and and then with a very inspiring story uh, from Kapil. And it was a very nice discussion with Kapil. And uh, over to you, Nirmal, for the final remarks. So thank you, Kapil, for your time and um, uh, showing up, uh, trying to sort out lot of questions which uh, most of the research aspirants face and thank you so much. Mm-hmm.